Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Zephran Aleph, and we got a special video today. Today, I'm joined by Richard, and we are going to battle out with the new Planeswalker decks. So, in the past, with each set release, Wizards released intro packs, which eh, were pretty horrible. They didn't feature very good cards, they had like a rare, but it started the running joke of intro pack rares, which are usually the worst rares in the entire set, but Wizards decided to get rid of intro packs and they replace them with Planeswalker decks. So with the release of Kaladesh, we have our very first edition of Planeswalker decks, and we have Chandra Pyrogenius in a Boros kind of aggressive deck versus Nissa Nature's Artisan in a blue-green energy style deck. So these are decks you can get from your local game store, uh, all different places online, so they're available all over. They are $14.99, and they come with two booster packs, and more importantly, all the cards in these decks are standard legal. So you can buy one of these, go to your FNM, and play it right out of the box, even though it has some unique cards that don't show up in the deck. So before we get to the gameplay videos, I wanted to take just a minute to talk a little bit about the decks, and specifically the unique cards, the cards that are only found in these decks and not found in any other set in standard. So each deck has the Planeswalker, and then they have three cards that are are unique to the deck and have to do with the Planeswalker or are somehow related in flavor to the Planeswalker. So let's start by talking about the Chandro Pyrogenius deck, the Boros Vehicles deck. So first off we have Chandra Pyrogenius, a six mana Planeswalker, can dome the opponent, can kill creatures, and for an ultimate, rass away the opponent's board, deals damage to your opponent. So a very Chandra-like card. The most interesting aspect of these decks is in a 60 card deck, if you only have one Chandra, sometimes you're not going to draw it. So they give you these tutor cards. Liberating Combustion is the Chandra tutor, and it's a sweet one. Not only does it allow you to search for a Chandra from your library, but you can also search for your Chandra if it died from the graveyard, and for five mana, you get to deal six damage to a creature, which is enough to kill just about anything. The second Chandra specific card in the Chandra deck is Renegade Firebrand, which which is a 3-2 three, for 3, eh, not that exciting, but if you control a Chandra Planeswalker, it gets plus 1, plus 0, and has first strike, so you get a 4-2 first striker, a great attacker, a good blocker on defense for only 3 mana. And then of course, wanted to mention Flame Lash, which isn't eh, exactly a Chandra specific card, but it has Chandra art, it has the Bernie flavor of Chandra, and it's a fairly powerful removal slash burn spell. Four mana, instant speed, four damage to a creature or player. So those are the unique cards that you get from the Chandra Pyrogenius deck. What about Nissa Nature's Artisan? Well, first off, you get the Planeswalker herself, and it's a pretty sweet one. Comes in with five loyalty, costs six mana, you can plus three to gain some life, you can negative four, to reveal the top two cards of your library, put lands on the battlefield, put the rest into your hand so it generates card advantage, and then you get the super mega overrun for the ultimate. Creatures you control get plus five, plus five, and trample. And just like the Chandra deck, Nissa Nature Artisan comes along with some friends in her deck. Most importantly, Verdant Crescendo, which is, like Liberating Combustion, a tutor for Nissa Nature's Artisan. Four mana, you get to search for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield tapped, and you can search your graveyard or your library for Nissa Nature's Artisan. The other Nissa specific card is Guardian of the Great Conduit, a 2-4 with reach, so a giant spider essentially, even though it's a elemental, but if you control Nissa, it gets plus two plus zero and has vigilance, so you have a 4-4 four, four vigilance reach, which locks down the ground and does a great job attacking, even blocks flyers. It stops Smuggler's Copter in its track, so if you got a Nissa, it's a pretty powerful card. The last unique card is Terrain Elemental. Not super Nissa-y, but it's kind of under-costed and can get in some early damage, plus it has some sweet Nissa flavor text. 
Those are the decks. So a brief reminder before we get to the gameplay videos, you can pick these up for $14.99 from your local gaming store or Amazon, wherever you'd like to buy them. Uh, but they're available everywhere. All the cards are standard legal. Each one comes with two booster packs, so you really get your values worth. Plus you get some sweet Planeswalkers and some unique cards. So those are the Kaladesh Planeswalker decks. And if you want to see how they play out, stay tuned because we're going to jump into the gameplay videos. First off, I will be playing the Nissa Nature's Artisan deck with Richard trying to run over me with the Chandra vehicle deck. All right, so I want the die roll. I will play first. Uh, this hand looks pretty good, so I will keep it. Uh, yeah, my hand actually looks pretty good as well. I will play Mountain, pass the turn. Ooh, well, dual land, Woodland Stream. I think I'm winning already. And here comes the Hyena of Kaladesh, trusty <laughs> companion. Uh, yep. I can't attack alone, but fear not. There are synergies, it's good at crewing. Well, I, I have an energy sub-theme in this deck. I'm not exactly sure how I get paid off for making all this energy, but Sage of Sahili's Claim... 2-1 gets me 3 energy. So this is one of the special cards. As long as I control Chandra, uh, Renegade Firebrand gets plus 1, plus 0, and first strike. And I can't attack because I can't attack alone. And one of the interesting things about Renegade Firebrand is it just says a Chandra Planeswalker, so you don't actually even need the one from the dual deck. So you could play this with any Chandra in any deck you wanted to. Um, alright, so I'm going to play Terrain Elemental, which is actually, I believe, a card that's unique to the Planeswalker decks, although it doesn't really reference Nissa at all. And then get some more energy with a tune with Aether. Uh, yeah, I guess I, this doesn't always have First Strike, right? Only if you have a Chandra. Yeah, only All right. if I have a Chandra. So I guess I'll swing in there. If you want to trade 3 power for 2 power, that's fine. Ooh. Uh-oh, that sounds like Chandra was drawn. <laughs> uh, Chandra costs more than 4, but <laughs> I oh. have a Thopter. The Snare Thopter. And I guess we just smash with everyone. Uh, I think I'm most scared of the Firebrand, so we'll trade off. Ooh. Hmm. Alright. Well, let's keep attacking. Actually, no, let's not attack. Uh, let's play a Long Fin Sky Whale. Pretty big, but gets shut down by your Thopter. Ooh, this is pretty good. So Liberating Combustion, I deal 6 damage to target creature, and I can search my library and or graveyard for a card named Chandra Pyrogenius. Uh, so yes, I will search for my Planeswalker, oh, and dear. we'll get in there. Um, okay, I guess we trade off. Uh, yeah, I guess we trade off. Yes, the Hyena did its job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Alright, so let's play a forest, and I think this has got to be one of my better cards. Except for Nyssa, but... Arborback Stomper, basically Thrag Tusk in standard. Although it uh, probably dies uh, to Chandra. If I could only cast Chandra. So I guess I will just kill your guy. Uh, yep. And we'll get in there with a the Thopter. Uh, I could use a Nyssa. Or an island. Uh, Servant of the Conduit. <laughs> so we're up to seven energy, attuned with ether, up to <laughs> nine energy, but I have not found a single thing to do with any of it yet. Now we just gotta hope Richard does not draw lands for several turns. All right, I will cast Cathartic Reunion. Oh. Getting rid of all these creatures because I want my land <laughs> to cast Chandra. Oh, Chandra coming next turn. Come on, Nissa. Oh, got a 1 in 45 shot of drawing Nissa. Could happen. And Veteran Motorist. Pretty good card. I get to scry two. One, two. I already have six lands, so I will scry these lands to the bottom. Okay. I have 
way more than six lands. <laughs> I guess we'll play defense here. Oh no. I think the end is near. All right. Chandra, the face card. Um, I guess I'll just kill your creature. All right. Well, we got to draw something this turn. Well, actually, kind of draw something really good this turn. We got to deal with both creatures. Uh, and that is another land. All right. Just looks like Chandra is better than Nissa. Well, hit you for two with Chandra. And boom. Uh, good game, good game. Good game. Uh, Chandra is pretty good when you don't have Nissa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I drew a lot of lands that game. I think one of the things that I'm interested to see with these decks is if it is literally just whoever gets their Planeswalker wins. In that game, I think my draw was bad, but it also felt like as soon as you got liberating combustion to get Chandra, like all of a sudden it went from kind of parody to me being super far behind. Yeah, I think the thing I like about these decks is you have the tutors, so you actually get to see your Planeswalker uh, a fair number of times. It's not just that one Planeswalker in your deck. You have the multiple tutors and the cards that interact with it, so maybe that lets you see the Planeswalkers more often. Uh, but that game, you didn't get Nissa at all, so... Alright, well, let's flip around the decks, switch them over, and uh, you can see if maybe you're better at drawing Nissa than I am. Alright, we're back here with game two of our Kaladesh Planeswalker deck battle. After Richard absolutely crushed me with Chandra, we're gonna switch things around, see if I can pay him back the favor. I get Chandra this time, the Boros vehicle deck, and Richard, what are you playing this time? I'm playing Nissa, the energy green-blue deck. And this time I won the die roll, so I'll play first, and wow, uh, I'm pretty sure this is like maybe the best possible hand this deck could have. My hand's no slouch either, so we'll see We'll see how this turns out. Like literally this looks like, like a nutty draft hand and a borderline constructed playable hand. We will attune with Aether. Oh, that card gives me nightmares because I expect to see Electrostatic Pummeler killing me about two turns <laughs> later. <laughs> uh, let's lead off on the oh, common, no. <laughs> the common version of Smuggler's Copter, Sky Skiff. Uh, we will turtle. Ch Chaz's uh, favorite card. Would have preferred to turn one, but I had to spend it casting a tune. All the attunes. Uh, well, I have a pilot for my Sky uh, Skiff. No. <laughs> oh, all right. We'll put that to the bottom. We'll leave that on top. Play Storm Quarry. Crew up the Sky Skiff. Get in 4 3 in the air. And go ahead. So, first, we're going to grow our turtle a bit here. <laughs> So when it attacks, you can pay two energy to get a plus one, plus one counter. And yes, I will pay. I still have four energy remaining. Looks like I made an oversight when I said there was no energy payoffs. <laughs> uh, terrain Elemental. And we'll hold up a single blue island just to instill the fear. Okay, so how do we want to do this? Let's crew up our Sky Skiff. Get in for three, and then play a gear shift ace on defense and a mountain. Uh, so it's a two-one first strike. Uh, so trade elemental is very sad right now, but the turtle is not. <laughs> uh, Look uh, at this turtle. It's a two-five. Uh, getting huge. And I will play garden guardian of the great conduit two-four reach. Uh, and if I have Nissa, it gets plus two, plus zero. Uh oh. Instant, instant replay of the last game. I have Liberating Combustion. Uh, yeah, that's not good. Uh, so we're gonna kill that Guardian. Gonna search our library for a card named Chandra, uh, Chandra Pyro Genius. And then, yeah, let's uh, crew up with Veteran Motorist. And I think we get in with both. And pass the turn with Chandra waiting. 
<laughs> so Chandra deals two damage. Kind of looking dead here. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I think. All right, we we will verdant crescendo here. Ooh. Get a forest. Get a Nissa. So we're actually gonna have Chandra versus Nissa, perhaps. Yep. Uh, so you can cast Nissa. Oh, you can't even kill the turtle. Oh, but you can kill the turtle. Uh, we'll just hold on defense. I want to get Nissa down and <laughs> try to outpace Seth and try to gain more life than he can deal damage. All right. So <laughs> if you're watching this video, what we probably should do is just like play this, attack with this, and win the game. But we have we have we have a Chandra in our hand, so. Even though it's not technically the right play, I can't resist actually casting <laughs> casting our Chandra Pyro Genius. And we'll just uh, hit Richard for two. And we're not going to block the turtle anyway, so we might as well crew up the Sky Skiff. And get in there. All right. We we got the flag of mercy, so now we can <laughs> cast Ardissa. Oh, should I just draw cards for value? That seems terrible. <laughs> I will gain three life and undo Seth's previous attack. That gear shift ace is ruining all of our plans, so we will just block. Hmm. All right. So one, uh, one, two, three, four. Play our snare thopter, which we probably should have played last turn. Oh uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll uh we'll crew up this vehicle. Uh let's see, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, you know what? We can send a message here and redirect this damage to Nissa. <laughs> Get in <laughs> Oh man, I'm so tempted just to kill Nissa, but I mean, we shouldn't do that. You don't want to be too greedy. Uh, and then I have built to last to pump up the sky skip. <laughs> oh, so we got one, one of two. So is we played two games. Obviously, tiny sample size. Chandra won both of those. Is Chandra just straight up better than Nissa as far as the the Planeswalker decks from Kaladesh? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I think if I had one turn there, if your hand wasn't as good, I could have turned it around because I have the Arborback Stomper in hand, so you can gain five life. And there's a bunch of random flying creatures, the, the long fin sky whale, uh, which you cast last game. And we have the vigilance creatures with reach. So you can actually, I think you're supposed to get really low on Nyssa and then plus gain life back to stabilize the game. So I actually think it's not that bad. That game didn't feel as lopsided as the game we, we, we played earlier because this time I wasn't mana flooded. So I actually think the decks aren't that close, but Chandra's game plan is really simple. You don't really need the right cards, you just need to cast creatures and smash face, so I think uh, her deck is more consistent, at least. Yeah, and I think maybe the other advantage of Chandra is it has a lot more removal, so I get to kill, or the Chandra deck gets to kill the Nissa's deck stuff, and technically, Chandra can sort of keep Nissa in check because you can redirect the damage uh, to Nissa from the Chandra, so I like that aspect of it, although... Like I said, the sample size is really small. When I played the Nissa deck, my draw, I just flooded out, and that's going to happen. You can't do anything about that. And I do think that if you get into a game where one player has their Kaladash Planeswalker deck Planeswalker, and the other player does not, uh, most of the time, the person with the Planeswalker is going to win. They do make it better uh, by putting the tutors in there, so it's not like you just have a single Planeswalker uh, like in the old Planeswalker dual decks, or the yeah, the dual decks. So it's not like that, where it's literally like sometimes someone just draws their one of that's unbeatable, you have the tutors to find it, but it does feel like whoever gets their Planeswalker down is pretty far ahead. And I really like the design of the tutors because they do something. So Nissa's uh, is ramp, uh, Chandra's is creature removal, but they also say you can grab your planeswalker from the graveyard. So if for whatever reason your planeswalker dies, you can actually bring it back uh, with these tutors. So that's pretty interesting, and it lets you play kind of the play as much as your planeswalker as possible. So I really like that aspect of these decks. So one more question for you, Richard. We've played a lot of dual decks over the past year and a half, two years. 
uh, think back on some of those. Where do these new Planeswalker decks fall, uh, fall as far as general power level? I think this is probably the most powerful, or at least most cohesive. These feel like they're almost standard decks. I think the best one had to be the Clash Pack with uh, the Fetch Land in it, because you know that one was just so full of value. But in terms of power level, I like this deck, and it felt really good, and it felt really fun to play with uh, standard legal Planeswalkers. So uh, I, I think this is probably the highest power level we've seen, and pretty close to just being able to jam it at your FNM. Yeah, I was actually thinking the same thing. It's clearly way better than the intro decks that they replaced, which were, I mean, unplayable by really even new player standards. They were just not good products, really. They were just so underpowered. And these really feel like they are at least on par with the Clash Pack type decks, which means if you're a new player, you're looking to first get into standard get your first deck buying one of these decks isn't a bad starting point and they are very upgradable you have like legitimate archetypes blue green energy sometimes splashing red but blue green energy is a real standard archetype you could add in some more rares and mythics and with that framework attuned with ethers the thriving turtles make a pretty reasonable deck same thing with the red deck red white vehicles is one of the best decks in standard if you trade it out you even get a fleet wheel cruiser in the deck which is in the tier one version you trade in some more vehicles kind of take out some of the weird stuff and you have a tier one deck there too so i really like these products as potential upgradable starting points for new players more so than the decks we've seen like this in the past definitely on par with clash packs and maybe even ahead of those because they really funnel into tier archetypes which wasn't necessarily the case with the clash packs and the event decks